So now we have our F user initializer that will take a dictionary and it's going to create an F user object from it. So wh what we are want to do now is use that dictionary, uh, that initializer with dictionary. So you can say F user and then now we, you can see we have an option with dictionary, hide enter. And here we need to pass an NS dictionary object. So uh, we have this snapshot item and we want to get a dictionary out of it so we can transfer it to our F user object. So if I access my snapshot, you see it's a type of document snapshot which is provided from Firebase. So we hit enter on it, we accessed it. And then if I hit dot, it will give me different options what our snapshot has. And one of them is our data. So if I click on data, you can see that this returns a dictionary of string as key and any as a value. So this is why, what we need. This is an NS dictionary. So um, just hit enter. So we take our snapshot data. And what I need to specify here, even Xcode is actually helping me, you can say cannot convert a value of type and then we have the type of string any, remember this is what our data is, into expected argument of type NS dictionary. The, so we have this value and our function is expecting to receive an NS dictionary, which actually is the same thing so we can um, easily force unwrap this because if you have a key value pairs, you can easily uh, unwrap it to an NS dictionary. So this way, we are going to have a user object, which uh, we just downloaded from our Firestore. So remember this case, if snapshot exists, means our user has already created the user object. So what we want to do when uh, we download this user, we want to save it locally. So we always, uh, whenever our user starts the application, we want to grab the latest version of F user object and save it locally. So in case if there were any changes done, let's say user logs in from a different device and goes and changes, for example, his avatar image or his age. So as soon as we log in on another device, we want to grab the latest user object from the Firebase and save it locally so we have access to it. So once we get create this user object, remember we have this handy function that uh, our F user has, which called save user locally. So we say user dot save user locally. And this will grab this uh, F user object and save it locally. Now, what about the case uh, when our user has uh, never uh, created his user object? So this is the first time he logs in after he created his account. We need to create this F user um, in our Firebase and keep it there. So um, we are going to again create a user object, F user object, but this time we are going to create it using the user object we have in our user defaults. Remember when we register a user, we uh, create a F user object, which is a dictionary, and uh, we save it in our user default so that when we log in, we have access to this data. So now we can take that the user that we have locally after our registration and upload it to Firebase. So um, this is how we are going to do. We are going to first check if we have a user object saved in our user defaults. And to do that, uh, we are going to write if let, so we are checking if user is equals and then we access our user defaults and then we want to grab an object for key and remember the key we used to save this user object in a user uh, defaults was k current user so we are going to tell our user defaults do you have anything for a key current user and if there is something we are going to set it the value of this user. So this is going to be a dictionary if there is a value. That's why we are saying if let. So in case if there is a value, we are going to take this, which is a user dictionary, and we are going to create an F user object 
again using a dictionary. So this is the code we are going to write again. So we say um, f user and then we create a dictionary and I can pass this user here and we need to say as ns dictionary. So now we have created this user object. So we have an f user object. What we want to do with it, we want to save it to Firebase. So uh, currently we have no function that can save a user to Firebase, but we are going to write one. So let's uh, jump to our save user locally, command click on it, jump to definition. And this is in our f user class. So underneath, I'm going to write another function. Let's just put a mark here, call this uh, save user funks. And underneath, I'm going to write another func called this uh, save user to Firestore. Let's make the store with capital. So um, we're going to call this function and let's just jump back here and on our f user, I can say dot save, I just command P to uh, enable the autocomplete, save user to Firestore. Now we can call this function on the f user object. I see there is a two different way we are writing this. First we here we assign a constant and then we create an f user and then we call the save user on it or we could just do like we are doing down you could do like this just do it like a one liner you just create a f user and save it locally straight away or you can do a longer way which is kind of more readable but i'm going to leave both ways so you can see the difference here this is more readable but a two liner and this is the short version and a one liner here so save user to Firebase function, how this is going to work. Let's, uh, let's see. Um, we are going to access our uh, Firebase reference. So we want to get this uh, reference of the user folder, user collection here. So let's access that. So I'm going to say Firebase reference and we need to pass a collection reference, which is we want the user. So we access the user and then we want to create a document. The document is going to bear our user object ID. So I'm going to say dot document and then I need to pass a document path which is the name of the document. So I'm, I can say self dot object ID. Remember this is a function inside the class so when I say self I'm referring to my f user class which has an object ID. So I'm just saying grab the object ID of this specific user and set it as the document name. And once we create this document, we can set data inside this document. So we're kind of saving a fi file in the folder. So we can say set data and the data we are going to save should be a dictionary format. So if I hit enter, set data, and you can see it's a type of document data, which is a dictionary of string as the key, and value can be anything. So um, what we can use here, which is quite handy, is this uh, function, it's not a function actually, it's a variable uh, accessible from our user object that returns an NS dictionary, which is key value pairs. So let's go ahead and say that we want to access again self because we want to do the specific user that we are calling the function on. And then we say user dictionary. And this returns an NS dictionary as you can see here. But remember this function takes string any as a dictionary uh, parameters. So we can simply say as for sunwrap and they say string as key and any as value. So this is going to take and save it to our Firebase. This is the first version of the function. Each Firebase function to get or to save something 
they provide two versions of the function. The first one you just save and there is no error handling. And the second one is uh, with a callback. So let's say if I call this right now and for some reason there is an error, for example, object ID is missing or the dictionary turns something that we cannot save to Firebase, this will not create an item in our Firebase, but also it will not let me know what's the problem with it. So you go uh, call the function, go to the Firebase where you expect that there is a user object created and there is nothing. And it's very hard to debug if you don't know what's the problem. So apart from this, there is a second way of writing this, a second type of function. So again, you write the same thing like Firebase reference and you access dot user dot document is the same self dot object ID dot set data object ID dot set data and there is a uh, where is it with completion handler so again you are passing the data but now you have this completion and error so what this does is exactly the same thing as this here, but it also tells you if there is something going wrong. Now if you want to keep your code short, you can write this, but I strongly suggest you always use this completion with error. So I'm going to get rid of this. So you know what's going on when it comes the time to debug your code. Just hit enter on this, call it error, and here we go. We are saving something and in case there is an error, we are going to catch it and show it. So I say if error is not equals to nil, it means we uh, got an error while saving something to Firebase, we are going to print that error. So I say uh, print and let's say error and I can force unwrap this because I just checked it's not nil. And then let's make it a localized description so it's more human readable. Okay. Now we have our function set and we can actually uh, try to log in because we're calling this. Let me just um, jump to my login view here and uh, see. So in our login, we say if user login, jump back here. Ah, you see, we, we, we haven't called this uh, yet. so if we try to run our code, nothing will happen. So in our uh, node here that we are uh, we have put it, we are going to get rid of this. And instead, I'm going to say Firebase listener is the class that we created dot shared. Remember when we say the shared, we are creating a singleton instance of Firebase listener. Now that we have access to the class, we can say download current user from Firebase with user ID and user ID is we're going to grab it from here from this auth data result and then we're going to uh, unwrap this thing get the user object and the user object has UID and the same we're going to do with an email address uh, we're going to pass it the email address we are say, uh, sending through our login. So we say email here. So let's go ahead and run our application.